Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our engine opening series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are continuing our look at the Queen's Gambit Accepted and uh, in this and the next couple of uh, short videos we're going to be having a look at one positional factor that's cropped up uh, a little bit uh, in the last month or so. Um, I mean I was commentating on the game Sivakuma against Hand in the Vasti match 2023 and um, Freddie Hand in this position played the knight to c6 and I mentioned in the uh, commentary at the time that I thought that this wasn't a, a very good move that in general it was uh, a poor decision to put the uh, uh, the knight on c6 in the Queen's Gambit accepted and uh, funnily enough um, in the very recent uh, uh, world championship match between uh, um, Ding and Nipomniachi, um, well the second game which um, uh, Ding eventually lost saw a Queen's Gambit accepted type position where um, White had to, in a way wasted a move with h3 but the extra tempo that Black had got was to develop a knight to c6 and um, you know although this didn't work out very well for Ding it did give Ding the the possibility of uh, playing this idea a4 b4 knight e4 and uh, well if you imagine the position the more normal position with the knight on b the knight on b8 still and the pawn still on h2 then uh, yeah this idea would have been completely impossible the knight would have had to gone to a a passive position a b1 or e2 rather than e4 so I just wanted to um, uh, go through this um, this positional aspect, the idea that uh, the knight is much better on d7 in the Queen's Gambit accepted rather than the c6, and just show you in a, a few short videos just a few examples of um, of, uh, of why this is the case. Uh, the funny thing, of course, is that uh, you know I was big Queen's Gambit accepted player during my professional career. I think maybe the uh, the major one you could say. And, um, um, you know, all of this knowledge was built up at that time. Now, looking at it again with the engines, you sort of see that actually that knowledge is still correct. But I think somehow um, it's it's somehow less clear, less decisive than I thought at the time, because, uh, you know, you give the engine uh, uh, a slightly suboptimal position. It does wonders to um, uh, to uh, repair it and uh, retrieve the situation. So um, we're not talking about wins and losses, but I think that we definitely are talking about um, uh, uh, you know suboptimal choices for um, uh, for black in this uh, in this opening. So the first one I wanted to show you was uh, occurs in this line. So it's d4 d5, c4 d takes c4, queen's gambit accepted. The main line and actually the old main line now. So castles a6 and now queen e2. So this was very, very popular in the uh, in the seventies, and uh, you know was one of the main lines when uh, when uh, you know I first started learning the uh, the Queen's Gambit accepted in the uh, in the late eighties, but um, uh, nowadays virtually never played. Um, but after Bishop C B seven Knight C three, well Black's got two possibilities for the Queen's Knight, and Knight B D seven is definitely the best one. However. Knight c6 uh, was played quite a bit um, yeah, in the 50s and 60s and you even see some uh, some transpositions actually from other openings there was uh, some sort of uh, semi-tarash uh, a game between uh, Vidit and So not so long ago where Wesley actually ended up in this position which should actually be absolutely appalling for uh, for black what's the, the big problem about uh, putting the knight on c6 yeah it blocks the bishop on b7 um, that's the main problem. And what does that do? Well, that actually loosens black control of uh, of, uh, of the centre, in particular d5. And uh, well, with the Queen's Gambit accepted, you know, very early you give up your, your d5 uh, central point. Um, you actually develop your queen side very early before you do anything about the black king. So actually keeping control of the centre, you know, keeping the white pieces and the white pawns at bay is actually very, very important. And uh, this move knight c6 doesn't do any of those. And actually the, um, um, the, uh, the consequences are quite severe. Because after rook d1, queen c7, we play d5. Now, quite interesting, actually, that the first game in this line is Rubinstein against Teichmann uh, from, I think, 1911, I think. And actually, Rubinstein had three games in this line. I think a couple of black and um, and one was white. And uh, actually, in all of them, he did not find the uh, the best way of playing, which is quite, uh, quite funny in a way. Um, so the main idea here is to take on d5 with the pawn. This is the, the main human uh, line. In actual fact... Give it to the engines, and already, you know, they're uh, they're taking action here and um, and uh, um, looking to actually to sacrifice the pawn 
uh, to uh, stabilize the situation. Uh, knight a5 was um, uh, Stockfish's choice actually. And uh, after d takes c6, knight b3 takes, we take back with the queen. And a takes b3. And uh, well, this has something of the semi Slav about it. Um, so um, actually, um, there is a human game played in 2023 with this. Um, and uh, that actually turned out quite nicely for black. Um, after bishop uh, e7, uh, white played knight takes b5. Um, a takes b5, knight e5. Looking for uh, a, a sneaky follow up with queen b5 and queen takes b7. But um, yeah, white, <laughs> white had missed that queen takes b3. Uh, not only wins the pawn but protects the pawn on b5 and white's got absolutely no attack um queen takes b5 would have been better but uh, actually black uh, does manage to survive like this um uh, queen b8 check i go queen e8 and uh, knight e5 queen e8 as well um stockfish thought that this would probably be uh, around equal but um but yeah black is ab absolutely surviving here um, so after bishop b7, uh, well, dragon played uh, the move e4, and uh, yeah, this is like a um, um, uh, like a uh, um, a semi Slav, Moran semi Slav. Um, only yeah, um, yeah, blacks, yeah, blacks got the two bishops. He's got that queenside majority, but somehow the pieces are a bit awkward. Uh, we've got f5 coming in. Uh, Stockfish managed to hold it, but it was quite uncomfortable in actual fact. So not necessarily recommended. Um, Dragon actually played knight b4 in this position, which was played by Alexei Shirov against, I think it's the young French talent, uh, Maurizi, um, in 2019. Um, the idea, again, is, uh, you know, a pawn sacrifice like this. And just, um, you know, uh, just sort of uh, um, looking to sacrifice a pawn, get the two bishops, get some compensation. Um, yeah, the engines uh, don't want to do that, actually. They just want to play the move uh, e4 and uh, leave this knight hanging on here and after c4 a3 takes takes bishop b4 knight b5 um queen b6 knight a3 it's quite nice this knight's coming around to c4 it's a little bit uncomfortable for black um you know this pawn's weak with white's getting tempo on the queen center's quite strong hard to find a good spot for this queen in actual fact but um yeah you know dragon managed to survive it as black so you know it's not uh, totally hopeless but well you can see that if the engines are already looking to sack a pawn you know somehow uh, survive this you can see how strong this uh, d5 central break is and after e takes d5 the key idea here is to play e4 with white so Rubinstein, uh, all of Rubinstein's games actually continued with bishop takes d5. Uh, by the way, you know, knight takes d5 is much less strong um, because after takes, takes, bishop e7. Actually, there's nothing wrong with black's position. The key thing is in this position is that um, there's got to be e4 to e5 from white, which attacks a knight on f6. If you exchange off the knight, then, you know, black's absolutely fine here. So Rubinstein actually played bishop takes d5 here. And, um, well, Landau Rubinstein, 1930, um, who knows whether Rubinstein had a had an improvement prepared? Uh, well, no, but he went bishop e7 in this position. Uh, that's right, uh, um, against Landau. And uh, after e4, rook d8, well, you know, it was a little bit uncomfortable for him, uh, to say the least. Um, but actually, b4 is very strong. Knight g5, and now we've got uh, two games of Rubinstein's here. Uh, one where he was black um, um, against Alekin in a consultation game. The other where he was white against Teichmann. And in both of those games, black played... Uh, well, the rather the rather passive knight d8. Um, really surprised, actually, to be honest, that uh, that someone like Rubinstein didn't spot that castle queenside here is quite good, um, and that actually, you know, this is just, yeah, this is just dealing with the whole problem. Um, obviously, you know, you can take this pawn and take a rook, but I'm I'm, I'm taking uh, minor pieces, so there's there's not much problem with um, with that at all. So, um, um, yeah, the, the best line that the engines found was to take, take, queen c4, king e8, knight e2, and now this move, queen d7. Um, we're threatening queen d1. Um, we've also got, got ideas of going uh, h6 here. So, for example, this was uh, one continuation, queen c2, h6, bishop e4. You know, black's just better here, uh, in actual fact. So, um, yeah, this bishop takes d5 move was not very good. But there is a move that's been played a lot in human play, which is uh, to go e4 here. And this is really serious for uh, for black. Um, now, plenty of games with uh, with d4. Um, but uh, And then e5 was really almost uh, obligatory. But after castles, takes, takes. Actually, the engines don't see any problem for black at all. Um, there's actually a game of uh, Leonard Barden. So the, uh, the Guardian columnist who's been writing his column for, oh, what is it? 
60, 68 years, I think it was, something like that. Um, he actually had a game like this in about 1950. Um, but actually, the by far the strongest idea is knight d5, which is, you know, again, very thematic. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of uh, um, taking control of this um, of this um, uh, square on d5, you know, and, and black's really got minimal uh, uh, coverage of it with the knight on c6. After queen d8, bishop f4, rook c8, a4, uh, just uh, striking on both sides, takes, takes. There's actually a um, um, a human game here, bishop b7, um, which was pretty promising. Actually, James Sherwin against Kramer, uh, New York 1954-55. And I'm pretty sure that's the same James Sherwin who's now living in the UK, still playing chess, still strong, playing a lot of rapid events uh, still. So he played knight g5, which was actually uh, um, also dragon's choice. Um, which worked out uh, pretty well. Uh, Stockfish's choice was to go knight h4, and after g6, bishop h6. And well, you can tell that uh, that things are um, are getting pretty scary here. Um, lots of wins all over the place. Um, uh, Stockfish just played knight f3, played very calmly. Dragon, of course, always looking for the exchange sacrifices. Played rook a6 and also won, and that was also the choice of uh, of Stockfish in another game. So, um, um, yeah, you know, I mean, this is really, really dangerous for black. Uh, the best thing that the engines came up with was, uh, was castles. And now you take with the, uh, with the bishop on d5. Even knight takes d5 um, is strong as well. Uh, Dragon uh, played knight takes d5, I, I seem to remember, and uh, won um, um, a pretty convincing game. That's also been played in a human uh, game as well. Um, but bishop d5 uh, feels even stronger. I mean, you've got this e4 to e5 idea. And uh, and actually after king b8, yeah, the engine's either saying h3 or a3. Just uh, sit and wait and see how black develops. And uh, yeah, that's kind of tough. This was the um, uh, the game, a game between, um, uh, what was it, Stockfish and uh, Dragon? Slightly long game, just scroll to the bottom. Yeah, Stockfish against Dragon. And uh, you get this sort of position where, um, you know, black sort of survived. Um, but, you know, you've got this um, uh, this king on b7 open to checks. Um, white's going to play, uh, if nothing else, queen e2, rook d1, and get into the d-file, and then black's just going to be struggling. You know, actually black is just going to end up losing at some sort of uh, material somewhere. And uh, that's actually what happened, I can just show you. Uh, rook e8, queen c2, queen c6, queen f5, and a pawn dropped. And uh, Stockfish converted that uh, about 67 moves later. So... Yeah, uh, you know, actually, I hope this is uh, some interesting theory because it's not so well known, this at all, and uh, a few novelties from the engines. But what I just wanted to show you, you know, just from a positional point of view, you know, this lack of control that, um, uh, that uh, you know, that black has um, in the centre when, um, uh, when, you know, the knight is in front of the bishop, you know, that can actually be really serious. And, you know, the reason for that, of course, is that in the Queen's Gambit accepted, yeah, you give up your central uh, point and you also develop your queen, your queen side before you get your king to safety. So, yeah, you know, very important to, uh, to make sure that central breaks aren't dangerous. And having the knight on, um, on d7 in this position, you know, this is a well-known position. We go queen b8, d5. I've had games against this. I won a nice game against uh, Mark Hebden with black uh, in this. But queen b7, e4, bishop b7. We get lots of pieces swapped off because we, we were controlling d5. And we just go knight b6. We castle. And actually, to be honest, I always considered black to be slightly better in these positions because of this lovely queenside pawn majority. But uh, yeah, with knight c6, it's a different story. We can't get rid of any pieces that come on to d5, or not uh, not satisfactorily anyway. And uh, um, yeah, and this queenside majority doesn't help at all. And well, if black's forced to castle queenside in front of these spawns, well, danger is looming. So there we are. That was the first video about this theme. In the next video, we're going to have a look uh, to see why knight c6 is, um, is not optimal in symmetrical Queen's Gambit accepted position. So I hope that's uh, interesting for you too. But thanks very much for watching this video. Do give it a like, subscribe if you liked it, and hope to see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.